What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what's up? It's Jay Campbell, and I'm making a quick commercial here for SeerCustom.com, my revolutionary cosmeceutical peptides company, co-founded with my business partner, Nick Andrews, who happens to be one of the world's top formulators. We have the revolutionary Oxano Grow, which completely regrew my hair. If you guys saw my hair about a year ago, I was almost bald. I even had the micropigmentation program from uh, Advantis. And now I've completely regrown my hair. That's just with version one. Version two is now in the marketplace or will be very, very soon. And it is three to five times as more effective than the current version or the original beta version of Oxana. We also have Royal Blue Serum and Sky Blue Cream, which will completely upgrade your face. I mean, I'm almost 50 years old. I have a pretty good complexion. I use it regularly. My wife swears by it. It will reduce fine lines and wrinkles, dramatically improve elasticity, and just the overall look and feel of your face. You feel great on both of them. You can also use them with red light therapy. There's all sorts of great stuff. So go to a seercustom.com. And if you're a first time customer, use the coupon J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I appreciate all you guys. And I send you tremendous love and light. Hey guys, what is going on? It's Jay Campbell, of course, the founder of the Jay Campbell podcast. And here today is part two of my literally revelational and profound podcast with Sean McCormick, who is the founder of the Optimal Performance Podcast, biohacker, deluxe, amazing guy. But why he's here doing a part two with Jay Campbell is because he is extremely spiritually advanced. And him and I had a very, very deep and resonant conversation last week. And this is part two this week. Him and I are busy cats, but we had to make this happen. So Sean, man, welcome back. How are you, man? Oh, let's just pick up right where we left off. I'm good. I'm I'm fired up. I like our little banter. There's a few minutes. Like, let's just go. Let's go nine miles deep in four minutes, and then let's turn the record button on. <laughs> John and I actually have just literally a four or five minute, as he said, profound conversation about how demonic Hollywood is. But we will spare that for another <laughs> show at some point. But uh, okay, so we started to get into where we left off last week. And by the way, guys, this podcast will run as a two part episode. So it will probably run, I'll probably run it the same week. Uh, I'll run it, you know, as normal launch on Monday and then probably drop the second one, maybe Thursday or Friday of the same week, just so that you guys will watch it. Uh, I know everybody's bombarded these days. Um, So the first point, and again, kind of where we left off was the spirit guide connection. And, you know, I will just say that ever since I recognized um, the power of, you know, benevolence, resonance, uh, you know, connecting with my angelic guides, spirit guides, whatever you want to call them, uh, my life has profoundly been altered. I have definitely risen uh, from a path of uh, ego and I would say blame and criticism to one now where I'm much more into acceptance and allowance. And again, I observe most things now from a neutral you know, observational platform. And I know it's because I feel connected to them at all times. You know, no matter how negative things can be for me, I can just pull back, walk outside Mm. of my backyard, put my feet in my grass or sit next to my dog and just say, you know what? I'm fully surrendered. Position me how you need to on this chessboard of life and away let's go. And then I just Mm. close my eyes and I breathe and I'm good. And I really am. And it might take 10 minutes. It might take 20 minutes. And I go right back to work, dude. And I feel Mm. absolutely amazing. And if people could just learn to do that on a regular basis, obviously daily, uh, life would change. But I really want to get your insights into, you know, what that really means for you. Yeah. We, if you think about the biodiversity on planet earth alone, you think about the, the different species of trees, of minerals, of animals on this planet that we are familiar with. Uh, there's a lot. They're there and we're discovering more all the time and we don't know what's going on in the ocean. We're finding new species. And when you think about all of the biodiversity on the entire planet, uh, there is an infinite amount of biodiversity in the unseen realms. Right. So 
The things we can see and touch and measure, that's great. That's cool. But there is so much more all around us all the time that we just cannot perceive. You know, right. you can look at the 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 eye, how the eye uh, perceives the spectrum of light. And it is important that each of us, if we want to continue to develop physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, is to have practices to attune are forms of subtle perception because angels, ascended masters, elves, fairies, devas, goblins, they're all around and they're just not seen by us. And so there are lots of different ways that you can attune your perception so that you are more aware of what's going on around you. And these entities, these subtle forms of energy can take on different shapes. They can be a projection of what we wish to perceive. Right. And some of those practices include like just exactly what you just said, which is go outside, find your breath, surrender, go barefoot on the ground. That's like, that's like step one, right? Like that's just maintenance, right? That's right. that's like, I'm just taking care of my shit. I'm just going to go sit for a minute. I'm just going to recalibrate. You can do things like uh, candle gazing. You can turn the lights off inside your bathroom, turn, light a candle and gaze at a candle. Yeah. You, you can obviously meditate. You can do psychedelics. You can dance. You can fast. You can um, do incantations. You can... Um, connect. You can do astral projection. These are all methods to hone these practices so that we can be perceptive to this infinite soup all around us all the time of these subtle forms of energy. And once you begin to attune to the subtle energy around you, a lot of things change, right? So you can see through bullshit faster, <laughs> like real fast. And there's a lot of bullshit. <laughs> uh, you are there's able mostly to, bullshit. There's mostly bullshit. Uh, you are able to, um, get a read on people faster. Oh, yeah. You can understand, um, what they're not saying when they're talking to you and where their heart is. You can be attuned to that. So your emotional intelligence increases yep. your, your level of focus increases, your power of manifestation increases, and there, th there comes a, almost like a superhuman, like superpower sort of ability in everyday life that just illuminates everything that you do. And there's no more important work than that. There is, there is not anything that is more important than you being aware of subtle energy because that's what's real, right? So, that so, so very well said. Um, let, let me just add, you know, to this. Um, it's truly fascinating. You know, again, we were talking off air. You know, there is technology out there, as you and I know, that can observe the, you know, interdimensional planes of existence. The, the, you know, the, in, like you said, the imperceptive, where you have all these subtle energy fields and beings, right? They're fields and beings. I think there's probably even you know, uh, non-life or non-organic beings with fields, right? It's insane. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, like curly in photography, um, now they have like a different level of infrared. They can also see these things, but you're absolutely right. But let's just go back to the ancient Greeks, Socrates and Aristotle talked about the, you know, competing daemons mm -hmm. sitting on each other's shoulder. So, you know, you had the benevolent daemon. Again, I'm not talking demons, daemons, right? Now, obviously, you know, words, root language, word meanings have been hijacked and inverted, but you had yeah. a, a, a benevolent demon and then you had daemon, excuse me, and then you had a negative daemon. And as you said, you create your reality through your will and intention. So whatever you saw in front of you, positive or negative, was influenced, again, by, you know, these amazing, you know, uh, philosophers so again, the, even then with, without their, obviously they didn't really have an awareness of you and I have of quantum physics, the Heisenberg principle and all those teachings, but they clearly knew yeah. that it was your will and intention that shows your path, whether it be benevolent or dark. 
And yeah. so if you understand that just at that base level, you also understand what you and I talked about last week, which was that there is no good or bad hmm. or light or dark or red and blue. Everything is just a shade and everything is constantly moving back and forth. Again, that pendulum aspect of things where, you know, one thing will become the other in time. And, and then, you know, it gets even worse because time doesn't exist outside of this third dimensional reality. So I think if people could just stop making definitions yeah. of like, you know, one side is this side and this side is the other. And, you know, I think of it like in the truth community, which has been so hijacked where, you know, you have the white hats and you have the dark hats, you know, you have people that yeah. are satanic and you have people that are for the light and all this stuff. And it's all BS because it's the same divide and conquer duality that they want, meaning they, whoever is the overarching controllers in the matrix, they want us never unified. Right. Right, Sean. I mean, I mean, talk right. a little bit about that because I really think that it's important that people understand to stop identifying with sides. Yeah, <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're all we're all part of this, you know. Read a Dr. Bronner's soap bottle and understand that we're all one. We're all part of this thing, and right. and and that and and that is a really woo woo sort of. Uh, thing to say that we're all one. But the fact of the matter is, True. is that we're all part of this fractal universe. So exactly. the cells in your body, the components of the cells in your body right. are a smaller representation of what makes up the whole, the whole body, right? Yeah. A little bone cell or a, you know, tongue cell is part of the whole, it's part of you. Totally. And, and we, as, as um, biological entities in this plane, in this time, we are all parts. You're a cell. I'm a cell. We're all working on this thing together. And we're currently um, on Gaia, right? So we're all part of this, this, this big picture of these different entities uh, or, or of, of these different expressions of, of, uh, of being in this moment in time. And so to say well, that's this type of person or that's that type of person. Well, today they may appear this way. Tomorrow they could totally flip. You know, you you have this free will to choose who you want to be every single day. And when we look at the world with more nuance and understand that, like you said, it's a spectrum, it's a shade. And there are people that do evil shit. There are people that do incredible, beautiful shit. And, and when we other people when we point and say well that's that's a you know that's a democrat or that's a republican and i don't i don't associate with those people right then it's Stop like this. you're <laughs> you're creating you're creating a, a a dualistic um perception of the world that's just going to hurt your feelings and make you mad and disconnect you from the beauty and the divinity that you already are and that that person is and that those people are. So we're all part of this thing. And a lot of us have done really great things and done really horrible things. Right. And so to say that there is a good thing or a bad thing, it's not so simple. And, and that, sort of, that, that sort of perspective, that shift in the way that you see the world is like taking off a backpack full of rocks. Right. When you're not, when you're no longer tied to the definitions of what a person is, and you're no longer associating with, oh, I'm a this type of person. I'm wearing right. this badge, right? I'm a, right. I'm a fill in the blank. When you, when you stop doing that, you're more free to make lots of different decisions that are the best for you, right. and the best for your community, and the best for the cosmos. It's, it, it's, it's this controlling mechanism that we have seen. It's so tiresome. It's it so is. tiresome. Okay. It's, so, so, yeah. so let me stop you because this is a, we're going on off a tangent, but it's a good tangent because for people like you and I, it's important that you and I discuss this because let's, we just got to a perfect location. I, we're going to talk deep about astral projection because, yeah. and that's coming, but where we're at right now is a very important topic for you and I to address because as you know, you just said it's boring. You know, I said this to my friend this morning as I was riding my bike. He was like, dude, I'm tired of this fucking spin cycle. You know, very advanced being consciously like you and I. And so people like us, dude, who knows how many times around the bush we've been, right? Because at yeah. our level of awareness, we've been through it, right? Mm -hmm. We've experienced pretty much most things 
And we're getting to this point now where we're watching the world unravel and, you know, spiral, you know, living in our, our heaven on earth. But, you know, from an external awareness perspective, you know, it's there, right? Because yeah. every day somebody brings it to you. I mean, obviously, I know we do our thing and we create and we stay in consciousness or co consciously co uh, co-creating, but it's out there. So to that point of what you just said, a lot of people who are awakening right now, as we talked about last week, are, are there. They're now like, okay, I'm aware. I know that what I've been taught is the opposite probably, but I'm still attached to some right, left, you know, paradigm again, you know, and the, the, you know, the way out again is within, but like, what do you and I guys like us, what do we tell these people? Because this is the profound number now of the newly awakened. And again, most of them are attached to one side or the other, right? They're attached to you know, the current presidential administration, no parties, I'll just say, and then the outgoing, right? So it's kind of that yeah. ride, um, regardless of where they find themselves, but they definitely know that something's up. So like, what do people like you and I help? How do we help those people? How do yeah. we teach them the concepts, which you and I have learned over many lifetimes? <laughs> How can we actually like actualize right now to, with those type of people? Like, what do you think is, and, and there's no right or wrong answer to this, but what yeah. are the best steps to help these people who are so attached to that fight right now? Yeah. Well, I, I think that, that we need tools and, and as a, as a personal coach, as a, as a performance coach, we need, we need ideas, right? right. Frameworks like yours, fantastically helpful. I mean, just gazing at, uh, at the board behind you and seeing the right. colors and seeing how things work, it helps awesome. people sort of wrap their brain around, uh, how things are put together and how they can, how they can increase their level of vibration. Right. For me, um, the thing that is the most debilitating that comes up again and again and again and again is living in a place of fear, right? There's no, there's nothing more detrimental to your health and your wellness, your spiritual ascension than fear. And we can talk about, you know, uh, archons feeding on that fear. We can talk about fear being a fuel for control. And, right. and, and I think that I'm, I'm, I'm sure you've gone there and covered that. But the fact is, is like, if you are, if you don't have a way to move through that fear, if right. you don't have a way to to, to change your perspective and to get out of that, that fight or flight mode, which keeps you in your amygdala, which keeps you thinking that you're going to be eaten by a saber toothed tiger all day, every day for right. decades. Like right. we all know people like this, that just, they, they haven't had a good day in 20 years right. because they're stuck there. They're stuck yeah. there. And there may yeah. be some other things that are going on with them, but getting past your fear is one, the most fundamental thing. And there, and I have NLP techniques, there's a thing called the stop method that's been really, really helpful for my clients. Uh, we can go there if you want a little bit later, but but get get past your fear. And the stress that comes from fear is also hurting your body. You're emanating negative energy in, throughout your house. You're sort of stewing in, in stress and fear. And it's really hard to do anything else if you're stuck there. So that's one thing. Another thing that I would suggest people do is ask themselves this question. And you can do this with your relationships, your job, your decision, whether or not you're going to flip somebody off in traffic is, does this serve my highest purpose? Right. Cupcake. Does this serve my highest purpose? Right. Like, um, snapping at my kids for spilling, you know, spilling water in the kitchen. Like, does this serve my highest purpose? And even if you don't know what your highest purpose yet is, which is fine. It's totally okay. You don't have to have all the answers yet. Right. Uh, does this serve my highest purpose? When you when you weave that into your thought process and into your self talk, your subconscious mind, your your higher self, right, a a, a version of you that is coexisting at the same time, um, throwing it out to your spirit guides that are that are with you, that are like rooting for you, that want you to be thinking in this way. When you say, "Does this serve my highest purpose?" you you start to make better better choices, better decisions. Uh, now nah, I'm going to, that cupcake is going to be fun for my mouth for 10 seconds. And then right. I feel guilty and flabby and jiggly when I go down the stairs. Right. So no, no, I'm going to, I'm going to refrain from that. I'm not going to flip this guy off. I don't know what his deal is. He's having a hard day. I'm going right. to refrain from that. Beautiful. Um, 
I'm going to sit and work. I'm going to do my thing. I'm going to create. I'm going to start a podcast. I'm going to play guitar. I'm going to paint on my canvas. You know, I'm going to go play with my kids. Does that serve my highest purpose? Absolutely. So those, those are two of many things that I think have, have really, have really helped people that I work with. And when you filter everything, when you filter that your decision-making through, does this serve my highest purpose? It comes automatic. And then, and then you become a better decision maker moment to moment, day to day, year to year. And then what happens is the universe is like, oh, he's doing it. He's doing it. Right. He's, he's, he figured some out. He like, he, he got the cheat code. He understands that he can ask himself this question and make better choices. And then what happens is the universe comes to support you. It supports you on this path. Sean, all beautifully stated, man. I mean, I can't really, you know, I, I could say it a different way, but you, 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 you hit it direct. I mean, it's, you know, as I told you, like, you know, the Zukoff book, uh, uh, journey, uh, creating authentic power journey to spiritual partnerships. You know, he says that uh, all third dimensional and, 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 and again, when I say he says this is in his book, but I mean, you and I already know this and many people have said this in another way too, but that all 3d relationships and partnerships are dying. All 3d created things from constructs like, uh, you know, central banking, uh, to, you know, brick and mortar, infrastructure for businesses, like everything that was 3d served a purpose for what it did. And it's dying now. And you can be beholden and attached to those things, or you can create higher dimensional multi-sensory relationships as he calls them spiritual partnerships, um, and focus on that. Or you can just, again, stay in the attachment to 3d and as 3d unravels, so do you, it's a yeah. choice. There's no judgment in that. So to what you're saying is, and, and, you know, I love it is you have to get again to that fulcrum, to that place of neutral observation in your life so that everything that happens to you, you can either choose to react out of fear or respond out of love. Mm -hmm. And when you respond out of love, you're coming from what you already said from your highest and best intention or your highest and best place, because love is the only thing that matters. I mean, as a soul or spirit, however you want to look at it at the end of your physical incarnated life, nothing is going with you except the love that you make hmm. will be equal to the love that you take. Hmm. So that's it. There is nothing that's else. It. So you're exactly right on it. I mean, the only thing that you can choose to do if you want to be a master in his human physical form is to respond out of love. And as you know, and as you already said last weekend, today, even today, the ego wants us to react out of fear. Because the ego's job is to allow us to survive. As you said, there are no saber-toothed yeah. tigers on the Serengeti anymore. We're mm -hmm. literally living in air-conditioned houses, right? I mean, what is the risk to our physical well-being from a 24-7 perspective? Very minimal, unless mm -hmm. you're in South Africa right now. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, but man. let's be honest. I mean, yeah. we, our egos, our ego mind is the prison. You know, it's the prison prism because yeah. it traps us in this survival mode of programming. And you said it best, you know, there are people, dude, who are literally in survival for 40 or 50 years. My parents, my mom and dad are multimillionaires retired in their seventies and still live in survival. Yeah. They've never done any inner work on themselves. And again, I have no judgment of them. I love my mom and dad for who they are. They did what they could. They live a life better than 96% of people on the planet. And to them, they don't even understand or have that awareness because they've never done any internal work. Yeah. They don't understand what internal work what even means. So like to what you said, um, it's a choice, bro. It's literally a choice to stay in survival, which is being stuck, reacting out of fear, letting the ego call the shots or getting to that place of neutral observation where you respond out of love. And you and I know, dude, and I'll let you respond to this and then we'll jump into astral, but you cannot get to a place of neutral observation unless you fucking do the work. Yeah. If you don't know what that means, then you ain't ever going to get there. Mm -hmm. Last week you talked about it or we talked about it. We're talking about it now. It's introspection. It's contemplation. It's meditation. It's plant medicine. It's psychedelics. It's astral projection, which we're going to talk about in depth. It's literally going within to go beyond. It's that simple. And so few to this day, bro, even still do that. You know, you talked about 
just go out into the backyard. Like that's step one, bro. Most people have never even gotten to step one. Mm. The, the, the work can be fun too. Of the course. work, the, the work is interesting. It's gooey and fascinating and it's, int- it's, it's, it's intriguing. It's enveloping. And, and I, I live for the work, bro. I, it's so, there, it's so, it's so interesting. so fascinating. At 845 that- every night. I'm literally thinking about, wow, I can't wait to wake up tomorrow morning. What am I going to experience without I- looking at my fucking cell phone? Yeah. The, 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 the work is, is a process of exploring yourself, exploring exactly. your conceptions. You know, you know, I look at the work of, uh, you know, Dr. Bruce Lipton, who's been on my podcast and we did a whole episode devoted to reprogramming your subconscious mind. And oh. from the year, from prenatal to age seven, you're in a theta brainwave state. So you're like not really in your prefrontal cortex yet. So until the age of seven and, and Gabor Mate suggests that, that, uh, that really like prenatal to three is like where you become who you will be. Right. But if you're in this theta state of zero to seven, you're not really learning anything. You're just absorbing, you're absorbing the the world around you. You're absorbing, um, concepts and conventions, right? And that's where your subconscious mind is created. That's right. literally the world of 350, dude. That's literally yeah. the world of 350 where you literally understand, but know nothing because you have no awareness. You're just <laughs> right. You're stuck in the left brain. Right. So as your subconscious is created from zero to seven and you have, tr- you have, maybe you have a lot of trauma, maybe you experience neglect or debu- uh, abuse, big T trauma, little T trauma that's stored in your body and it's stored in your memory. And as you continue to grow older, if that goes unchecked, then it will manifest in different ways, obesity or cancer or, you know, toxic relationships or a gambling habit or alcoholism. And if you don't go and, and take a look at that and do the work and the work can work can be something like self-hypnosis at night before you go to sleep, recording a track that you're talking to yourself programming your subconscious mind so that when you go to sleep, you can do some of this work. And this is, uh, this is a good dovetail into, into astral projection, but you can, you can program your subconscious mind through those techniques, tapping EFT, emotional freedom technique, where you tap on these different energy centers, collarbone, orbital bone, forehead. And you're saying these things that are there, even, even though I have trauma in my life, even though I have trauma in my life, I choose to transcend that trauma. I choose to transcend that trauma as you tap all around your body. So like these sort of, um, you know, spiritual energetic practices, rolfing, um, you know, those sorts of things, that's the work. Those are the elements of the work. And sometimes the work is just like not looking at your phone for 30 minutes. Sometimes the work is going out and going for a walk in nature. Sometimes the work is just getting eight hours of sleep. So when you're inundated by news and media and fear and stress and bullshit, 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 it's tough to do the work because you're so distracted and the deck is stacked against you because there's money to be made on your sickness. There's money to be made on the way that you use your dollar in the world. And so that, that sort of work Having helping people kind of unpack what that work looks like: therapy, coaching, flotation tanks, you know, plant medicine. These, the that that's the work. Yeah, well, well said. Um, and and you know, we'll get to pl- uh, astral in a second because I'm, I love astral. I love talking about it with mm-hmm. people. Um, and I'm not an astral uh, traveler other than my dreams, but, um. Dude, it's just simple. It, it, you know, again, it, it's not simple to get here, but it's simple to recognize that the work is really just knowing that the only thing that matters is right now. I mean, obviously, mm. the power of now and the zero point and all these things are so over cliched and the, you know, uh, spirituality movement or whatever we want to call it now. You know, everybody talks about it, but it's really just the awareness that you, all you really have is like the present moment. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay Campbell. Quick commercial 
for the Optimized Tribe with U.S. Navy SEAL Michael Jaco and I every Monday night at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. There is not a single group online where you will get the highest level intel that Michael and I can provide you from mastering intuition to fully optimizing your hormonal health to improving your fitness, to raising your vibration and increasing your consciousness. There isn't a single group online with two dudes like Michael and myself helping people become the best version of their self. It's literally $99 a month and you get a 90-minute call with me and Michael every single Monday night. Don't wait another second. Sign up now at the link, theoptimizedtribe.com. I appreciate you guys and I send you tremendous love and light. I forget the guy's name, Brown, that wrote The Precious Present or whatever, you know, talking about, you know, do you have presence to be in the present moment? I can't think of the guy's name, something Brown. Um, but, and you probably have read the book, but, but the reality is, is like, it's just getting to a point where your awareness is of your breath and in your conscious state in the moment of every second. Mm -hmm. And that there is no tomorrow that's guaranteed and that past is, it's gone. It doesn't even exist in, in, in from a relativity standpoint. So if your mind goes to what happened in the past or what may happen in the future, it really doesn't even matter the amount of work that you do with all the things that you talked about, which are all important. And, and again, you, you can't get to this conversation that you and I are having without doing those things, but it's then getting to that awareness of like, you know what, man, fuck it. I'm fully surrendered. Every mm -hmm. single moment is a goddamn blessing. I can choose to be grateful for being in that moment and having that moment, or I, I can choose to be worried about something that may or may not happen in the future. And again, I think all the math has ever been done. Like we, 98% of the things that we worry about, bro, never even materialize. True. It's true. Yeah, it's true. Well, 98% of our, of, of, of all the thoughts in our head are coming from our subconscious mind, right. which existed between the ages of zero and seven. So all of that stuff, all that negativity is coming from this place that you that you can't even track to now you can't even pinpoint anymore exactly. into, into your anxiety and depression uh, that, that the that's living in being fearful of the future is anxiety and lamenting exactly. the past is depression. Exactly. I mean, th so <laughs> think about how retarded that is. They both don't exist. Right. The, exactly. Right. The anxiety, <laughs> the, if you, then the numbers and statistics around the increases in anxiety and depression in, 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 in even, even super young, young people is a lack of being in the present moment. If you're present, you don't have anxiety about what's coming next. If you're in the present, you don't have lamentations and, and, and mournfulness right. about the past. You don't, you don't feel depressed. And, and that's hard. That's hard to do for a lot of people. It's hard Sean, to, you know, to why it's that. hard. That's so beautiful. What you just said, you know why it's hard? Because think where are young boys? Where are they most of the time? Video games. Where are the young girls, Instagram, Snapchat, or YouTube? Mm -hmm. That's where they are. How can they be in the present when they're in a matrix simulated reality created by people who do not want them to be living in the present? Right. And this is a really fascinating kind of point that, that really was a major light bulb for me recently. Uh, Jordan Peterson did an interview with uh, Eric Weinstein. Um, I'm sure you know, know the names. On Twitter. He's, we follow each other on Twitter. I know Eric. So they had a conversation on Eric's podcast about the primacy of reality. And now for an, an, an increasing number of people and a whole generation coming up, the primacy of their reality is online. They would rather have more Reddit points. They would rather have more likes and more followers insane, bro. online than friends in, in the real physical right. world. Their, their, their reality is a simulation. Exactly right. Exactly right. So how on earth can you be grounded? How on earth can you be present when the primacy of your reality is in the fake. cloud somewhere fake it's not real it's you know yeah that, that's a, it's a whole other whole other tangent but i well, think that I mean, it is and 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 uh maybe it's a third podcast because it might be <laughs> the most important thing because as you and i started saying last week bro we both know this i mean you know why not say it on youtube they're not going to delete this i mean where we're going is either a singularity or a golden age. And as I said to you last week, it may be altogether possible that both happen mm -hmm. in the same, uh, you know, 
uh, parallel timelines. Literally, the golden age can be where the human beings who are consciously co-creating in divinity or in the energy and frequency of divinity build alternative worlds and systems yeah. and, 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 and payment processors and banks and eco-friendly farms and land and harvesting and water and all that. And the biobots who want to live in the simulated cloud, you know, have Ray Kurzweil invent them a technology where they just hook up to it and they're like, fuck this, man. I want to just be a giant fat blob connected to a, you know, uh, what do you call it? A respirator or whatever it would be, some sort of bio human chip synthesizer. And they'll, and then they just live in their virtual reality. I mean, yeah. honestly, dude, like it could, both could happen. Right. I think you're right I mean, about I that. I know where you and I are going to be, but like, if people yeah. want to go that other path, then, then, you know, be my guest, but yeah. don't force me down that pathway. And honestly, dude, like, you know, we, we talked about it today and we're not getting into it. Cause I don't want YouTube to delete this, but if they start coming, knocking on your door, bro, it's <laughs> going to be a different story than what it is right now. Yeah. You know it what is. I'm saying? I so, do. I do. Yeah. So. It, yeah. You've got to make, you got to make some choices for yourself and your family and you've got to be, you've got to be prepared for those, for those consequences. Well, it, the last thing I would say about that, and we'll switch to right now to astral is yeah. you and I have already prepared. We have moved our families out of the major city. If right. you're still living in a major city right now, and you know who you are, LA, New York, Seattle, Miami, Houston, Atlanta, Austin, you know, it, when I mean in the city, I mean like you're in the 15 mile, you know, PMA of the city. We got no, you know, you're get you're going to get what you deserve. Yeah. Cause when it goes to shit, you're going to be in the epicenter. And if you think you're going to be able to rely on, you know, services like the police and all that stuff. Well, you know, grocery stores. Yeah. 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 All it's, of it. Yeah. All it, it's hard. It's hard to grow your own food in an apartment, you know, in, in Manhattan, in you know, <laughs> in Austin. Yeah. Yeah. Hey man, it's, it's a choice, you know, no judgment. If that's where you are, you get your soul's going to, it is evolving and growing and you're going to learn from that experience. Okay. Let's talk about astral. Well, let me just set this yeah. up. So I want to actually share my screen. Um, Ooh. Yeah, bro. Nice. Uh, Let's see here. So when I started reading uh, Robert Monroe, I was 27 and I'm obviously 50. So this is a long time ago, but these books, bro, blew mm. me away. When I read this book right here, Ultimate Journey, like I had never been so fascinated. Oh my God, that would have been so cool if it had 333 ratings. That would have been insane. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, honestly, this book or that book completely blew me away and i was like catapulted into a vast nexus of like an awareness that i didn't know i had obviously but also like a true awakening of like holy fuck this mm. conscious reality that i'm in right now is nothing as it seems and it, it, i mean it, i was always a seeker clearly so were you you know in this incarnation and probably all of our incarnations but that book and that experience, and I read all of the Robert Monroe books, blew me away. Now, in truth, I have never attempted, even though I have really good mm. friends who are well-meaning, who are like, "No, dude, you got to work on it. You work on it." I've never done it. Um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm also not of the mindset that like I want to go deep into meditation because I don't want to really experience what may or may not happen. I mean, I'm obviously extremely meditative and contemplative and reflective, and all about mind silence and stuff like that. But you know, I'm a 15 to 20 minute guy. I get out of it what I need and then I go on. Same thing as I told you what my plant medicine experience is. That's why I use, you know, MEO because I'm mm -hmm. into the mothership and back out of the mothership. Um, so, but that's just my conscious journey. You know, I have, you know, I know a lot of people like more and need more and want more, but uh, I, I obviously you are a veteran. So I want to hear your, um, your, uh, you know, how you do it and, you know, your experiences uh, per se. I will say there's no question that all of us, uh, who lucid dream, who understand dreaming, who do, who do dream journaling, um, can actually project and probably often do. And I will just say this to you. And again, I can't prove this, but like there are times, bro, where, you know, you wake up in the morning and you know, you slept well and you literally feel like you were hit with a sledgehammer. <laughs> yeah. Right. So like, to me, I've always thought like, you know, 
I know that this didn't happen in my, you know, my fake, you know, uh, actual dream state physical reality during the day, but in my real reality, which is at night when I'm sleeping, something incredible happened. I was yeah. in a fight, a, you know, a foxhole, <laughs> yeah. a bomb went off, whatever. But I mean, so to me, I always kind of was open to the idea that maybe I am actually projecting in that capacity because yeah. there's no fucking way that my physiology should take this kind of a beating upon waking up. And as you know, it's not just like the restlessness about waking up. You're stiff. It's like six, eight hours later, you're, you know, again, you're physically awake and you feel like you just were in a football game, a type <laughs> of football game, right? Yeah. Right. Interesting. I, I think this, this is going to, you're going to like this because what initially drew me to develop my nightly practice of astral projection. And I haven't done it in a couple of years. I'm considering going back to it. And there's an explanation why I stopped. Um, the reason I was drawn to it, not only because it's amazing and cool and fascinating, and what does that say about the nature of reality if we're able to project out of body with lucidity and recall. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the main reasons was kind of like you, like I wanted to get it. I wanted to make make good use of my time. And a third of my time is spent sleeping my entire life, right? So this exactly. third of my life is, is spent sleeping. Well, how can I make the most of that? And the opportunity to do deep and meaningful spiritual work with deeper rest and have incredible experiences and connections to tr literally travel to to other parts of the world. Uh, it's a good use of my time. I'm sleeping anyway. I might as well project out of body and do, do that sort of work while I'm sleeping. And so maybe that will resonate with you a little bit is, and, and, and I know that you're doing the astral or that you're doing the lucid dreaming and tracking really closely. You're like right there. You're super close to be able to switch that into lucid uh, or into astral travel. And you're right. You probably are. You probably are doing that may, maybe way more frequently than, than you, than you know, than you're aware right. of. And so that's what drew me to it was I want to, I want to do spiritual work in this third of my life where I'm just sleeping anyway. And so I read a book called uh, Demystifying the Out-of-Body Experience by Luis Minero. This is a phenomenal text, phenomenal. And it talks about the research that they're doing in Portugal with this giant geodesic dome with a platform out into the middle, just like Professor X uh, from the X-Men nice. to induce higher capacity for astral projection. Uh, there so are, by the way, do you think that whole Professor X was just another tell? <laughs> right. Really? Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. Uh, the, the, the research goes way back, goes back decades and decades and decades. Um, but even before that, we're talking about ancient peoples doing this sort of work, projecting out of body, getting into an altered state of consciousness, like every shaman, like, yep. you know, that you've heard, read about to do this work on the astral plane. <clears throat> God so I read, you. Oh, thank you. I read the book and I immediately started to put into practice all the things that were suggested. So there's a couple of, couple of key elements to this. And one is will. Will is the number one and most important element in it, period. Will. Right. How right. bad do you want it? Right. How much are you thinking about it? Right. How are you, are you orienting your thoughts, your actions, your behaviors during the day, your lifestyle habits that may fuck with you if you try to if you when you try to do it? How bad do you want it? And that goes the same for everything. We could do a whole podcast on will, but this is the central tenet of this: is how bad do you want it? Everybody can do this, but how bad do you want it? So what I decided was in 2018, I was like, I'm going to do this. I owned float centers. I had access to float tanks all day, all night. And so I decided that I was going to be uh, working the night shifts at the flotation tank center and then sleep in the tank and project from the tank because that's a sort of a perfect environment to, uh, to project. So after reading this book, I decided I was going to take all of 2018 off of cannabis and alcohol. 
and I like cannabis and alcohol. I've, you know, enjoyed it, you know, for a long time. But I said, you know, in order for me to really elevate my vibration, you know, some people right. choose vegetarianism or veganism in order to, right. to go on this path. And for me, it was, you know, a joint a day, you know, a beer, a glass of wine at night. So I wanted to elevate my bra- vibration so that I was able to, to project more, uh, more effectively. And uh, lo and behold, about two or three weeks into this one year period where I was adamant that I was going to be disciplined, I had my first projection and I was in the float tank and I did the, what's called VLO, V-E-L-O, which is voluntary. um, Oh, I forget the E. It'll come back to me. Voluntary uh, something longitudinal oscillation. And basically it's a, it's a long winded acronym of saying you're basically moving energy up and down your body. Exactly. So volunt- oh, forget the E uh, you're moving it up and down your body, up and down your body, up and down your body. You're opening your chakras. You're, you're, you're picturing and going into your shot, your chakras right. from root to crown. You're opening them up. You're closing them. You're opening them up. You're rotating them around to re- literally suck in what's called uh, a thosine. And a thosine within this context is the energy inside a room. And we've all felt this before, right? You walk into a library, there's a vibe in there. Just right. You can think of thosine as a vibe. You go into the bedroom, there's a vibe in there. There's some things that happen in there. You go into the bathroom, your office has a thosine. It has, there's, an, there's an energy inside this room and we can all affect that energy with our consciousness. We can right. actually change the energy into a room. We've all walked into rooms where you're like, Ooh, there's some people in here that, man, it does not feel good. I'm going to go in. And then you're affected by that, by that thosing. And if, and if a room or a bedroom where everybody projects at bed at night has a lot of negative energy, right? Having a television in your bedroom is a bad idea. If you've got dirty electricity in your, in your bedroom, that's a bad idea. If it's <laughs> messy, there's shit everywhere and there's piles of clothes and, kids toys in your bedroom. It's a pretty scattered sort of environment to try to do this. So I took a lot of effort to make sure that my float centers were dialed. We're talking sage and Palo Santo and crystals and, you know, Agua de Florida, just taking, I have have giant, I have a box. You got a chug. (laughs) Yeah. 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 To take care of the, the, the energy inside of space so that it's not tampered and, and, um, and, and sticky for you to be able to project. So I'm doing these practices. I'm doing, um, these practices during the day at the grocery counter, uh, moving energy up and down my body saying, I will project with recall tonight. I will project with recall tonight. I did some of the practices, some of the breath work. And I think it was two or three weeks in after I'd read the book and I was doing these daily practices. Uh, I had this like moment naked in the float tank, probably 11 o'clock at night. And then this like sound, this like popping sound. Wow. And then, and then I'm up above myself looking down, uh, at my, at my body. And this was the third time in my life that that had happened to me. It happened in a meditation session, probably three years prior involuntarily. I just found myself up, up, up above my body and thought, well, this is fucked and weird, but I'm just going to stick with it. I didn't lose it. Uh, and actually my very first float session that I did at some dude's house of this yoga instructor, I had an involuntary projection at his, in his house too, um, in, within his float tank. So this is the third time. So I'm like, Oh, I've been here before. There I am naked in the float tank. I can see through the float tank. I'm now floating up above and I go, well, I'm going to head out into the lobby. So I, you know, kind of cruise out to the lobby One of the other things that that you can say where you can be sure that you're projecting and not just having a lucid dream is there's a silver cord right? that's connected at the base of your skull in the back. Yeah, exactly. And that silver cord connects from the bottom, you know, the, 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 you're basically your brainstem back down to your body. And so you can actually like reach back and feel for it. And it's, it's, I mean, it's weird to project out of body. It's even weirder to reach back and feel the silver cord that's connected to your, to your spine and then watch it trail back down your body. So I don't remember by the way, in the movie Avatar, they showed the silver cord. Right. Yeah, they did. Right. And I'm like, oh, it did one of those. Oh, (laughs) yeah. 
So I cruise out to the lobby and I'm, there's nothing going on there, you know? So I go outside and I'm just sort of like hanging out in the street and it's 11 o'clock at night in Seattle and I see some cars drive by and I'm like, okay, so that looks like a real car. Uh, this must actually be happening. I must actually be projecting here. So I thought, okay, I'm going to go. We're by this place in gr called Green Lake, just north of Seattle. So I cruised out oh, out above the lake. And this lake uh, happens to be oriented in the middle of the highest concentration of ley lines in the Pacific Northwest. So ley lines are energy meridians yeah. that run along yeah. the planet Earth, right? So there, there was the highest concentration of ley lines intersecting in Green Lake, this you know highly energetic place. And so as I cruise out to the lake, I feel like this thing kind of up behind me. And then I feel this other thing kind of up behind me, kind of coming with me, not really like bugging me, but just like present. And so as I cruise out to the middle of the lake, I sort of like turn and I get this familiar feeling like I've seen this thing or felt this thing before. And it was sort of a... Um, sort of a misty sort of human size sort of form. It wasn't, it wasn't like really distinct. And I was like, well, this is interesting. And part of this process is to just like stay in it. Right. Don't freak out. Right, right, don't jump right, to right. conclusions. Don't try to define it. Just stick with it. So I'm like, okay, well, this is interesting. And I turn and look over on my left side and there is one of my spirit guides clear as day. He wow. happens to look like Jeff Bridges from the big Lebowski <laughs> awesome. from Starman. <laughs> I call him Bo. Um, he's one of five that are really present with me all day, every day, m more or less. Um, I call him Bo because I thought of when I saw him for the first time as a kid, he looked and then saw, you know, the big Lebowski as an adult. He looks like Jeff Bridges, like cardigan, right. bushy beard, you know, right. sort of laid back right. and chill. Just chill. I asked him, like, can I call you Bo after, you know, seeing him in dreams and meditation and, and, and he's like, yeah, call me whatever. Sure. Call, call me whatever you want, bro. Call me whatever you want. So there's this misty being on my right, and there's Bo on my left as we cruise out to this lake. And then as we get over to the lake, there's a lot going on. Like there are star bursts, there are balls of light zipping around. There's something humongous over on the other side of the lake. And I and that's when I started to get a little bit overwhelmed because this was this was the first time where I was fully lucid fully like in this, in this place with this spirit guide that I've seen before, you know, my homie Bo, whatever yeah. this thing is. And there's tools that you can do. You can ask it, are you good? And yeah. bad things will not lie to you. There's, right. it's not, not part allowed. of, they're yeah. not allowed. So if you say, are you good? Then that thing may not say anything at all. Doesn't mean it's good or bad. It just may not reply. If you say, Hey, are you good? And it says, yes. Are you good? And it, if it says yes, then it's good. If you say, "Are you good?" and it says, "Never mind that, let's party," then you're like, mm, no. "Okay." And some will just once you've asked that question, they'll just bug out and take off. So I didn't have to do that. I didn't do that this time. But that was my that was my first experience. And then once I got out and saw like the astral friggin' dance party menagerie going on above the lake, then it was like, whoa, this is, this is overwhelming. And then I like whoosh, snapped back into my body. It was like, oh, okay, we're on, we're on to something here now. So that was, that was like the beginning of that practice. That book lays out exactly how to do it, what it is, how it works, historical contexts, research that's being done and gives you really a step-by-step -step guide. I followed it to a T I cleaned up my diet and this kind of goes back to a, a more broad and, and I'll, I'm, I'm sure you got questions so I can, or thoughts. So I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll turn it over to you in just a second. But um, this goes back to an idea that, that you and I have kind of been batting around, which is if you want to increase your level of consciousness, if you want to raise your vibration, if you want to do the spiritual work that you chose to do in this life that you signed up for, that you said, right. Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to pick, I'm going to go to these parents. I'm going to do this type of work. Um, I'm going to do this work in this time on planet earth. If you want to do that work, you've got to clean up your, your body. You've got to clean up your habits. You've got to clean up your mental standpoint, your, your, your sort of mentality. And so for me, Making that firm commitment, like I'm not going to smoke weed for a full year. I'm not going to drink a drop of alcohol for a full year. And that, 
you know, how old was I? I was probably 30, right? No kids yet. 30. Um, th- that was a major, major commitment, a, a sort of yes to the universe that this was going to be, that this was important to me. And by cleaning up my diet, by cleaning up my body and sort of clarifying it a little bit, keeping my mind clear, uh, it, it allowed me to open up to, to spiritual experiences, to a deeper, a deeper connection with the non-physical. And you and I have obviously been talking about what's, what's the biohacking for? What's, wh- why does it matter if you have hair? Why, why is being fit a thing? Why does it matter if you have a six pack or not? And it's like, well, it's a, it's a pathway is what it is. So uh, that was a long, super, super long rant. No, it's good. I mean, uh, you know, I, you know, my, I, I, I want to find out, you know, email me the, 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 that book or a link to that book so I can buy it and read it. But, uh, uh, Monroe is obviously, you know, in the mainstream, the most famous guy talking about astral and that, you know, that book ultimate journey, you know, he talks about his gift, that, you know, as you develop this is that he was actually able to go into when he would go into his astral projections and find wayward souls who were still stuck here in the material plane because they refused to accept the reality that they were dead. Right. And if you think yeah. about it, John, for people that are again, not awake, And, you know, you just said it best, like all of our, let me, let me clarify this for some of you. If you don't get this, all of us, the only path we have is a spiritual path. The only goal of a soul is to awaken and to walk back towards perfection, which is where we, from whence we came. But obviously a lot of people, bro, get caught up in getting high and getting drunk and becoming obese, which is just as, just as much of as an addiction, you know, to, to food. And to the emotional, you know, uh, responses and all the things that it creates. So they get lost, you know, again, they become wayward. And so, you know, why would those same people upon death not also still be Mm. lost? Right. Right. So so Monroe had this amazing ability as he continued to develop it. And he talks about it in that final book of his ultimate journey. And remember he, you guys, he formed the Monroe Institute. It's still open. People still go there. But, um, he said, look, you know, my, my, my final end path was to help wayward souls get out of the physical realm, you know, as a quote unquote astral being still inhabiting the physical plane, unaware that they're dead. You know, I mean, he had all these conversations and he would share these conversations in the book. And again, the book is profound. Again, it's called ultimate ultimate journey by Robert Monroe. I highly recommend reading it. You know, all of his books are great, but that was his like real, um, you know, masterpiece um, on astral projection. But, uh, I mean, dude, you brought up a lot of good points. I mean, I, you know, I want to be fair to both of us and, you know, we got like 15 minutes left and I want to hit these last two, but I mean, I think you covered it really, really well. I don't really have a lot of questions about it. I mean, the only thing I would say from a comment standpoint is, and you saw it, you know, the menagerie, as you said, above the lake, I mean, people have no clue what the fuck is going on in the astral, <laughs> but there is all sorts of stuff, good, yeah. bad, indifferent, you know, cause again, outside of this sure. dimensional aspect, there is none of that. It's just like you said, you know, I always say it like this and you know, good or bad. I mean, I, you know, that again, that's a third dimensional construct. I just say, look, if you're not here to serve my soul at my highest and best intention, you are not free to be around me. And then they have to leave And Again, it's universal law. So it's the same right. thing as saying, are you good or bad? Are you, you right. Know, are your intentions benevolent or not? Um, and again, it is universal law. They have to declare their intentions. And and that's the thing, dude, is like, you know, here in the matrix, the bad guys, and again, for, for third dimensional constructs, we'll label them the bad guys. The, those mm-hmm. who would hold us back, the left, the left hand path, they always tell us what they're going to do. We yeah. still have to consent. As you and I talked about last week, what do you think this is? This is a tracking device, a monitoring device, a listening device. Every time you or me or anyone buys one of these things, have you ever actually read the fine print? No, because you get that new upgraded phone. And now nothing is even printed out. They don't kill trees and make you read it and sign it anymore. Now it's just like, you know, whether you're at Best Buy or Verizon or AT&T, they say, click here, click here, click here, click here, click here. Yeah, yeah. So you're literally consenting to demonic witchcraft. Yeah. <laughs> no idea that demonic witchcraft is being employed on you. So, I mean, again, the devil is in the details. 
Yeah. But no one is paying attention to the details anymore because they're more focused on the next shiny object that's put before them. As you said earlier, I mean, bro, the young people of today prove to me that we are headed towards a bifurcation because I don't know, Sean, you know, you and I and people like us can do as many podcasts and write as many books and create as many courses talking about this. If they still choose a simulated reality devoid of curiosity, devoid, devoid of co divine co-creation, that's them. Yeah. But how can they, and again, you know, I can make a very cogent argument that that might be the easiest way for them to exist because living on planet earth is hard, bro. Mm -hmm. It's hard. <laughs> I mean, think of all those kids, bro. And you know, no, what was it? Uh, February when the, you know, uh, it was late January, early February when they had that cold snap go through Texas and they don't even have fucking food in their house, bro. Yeah, and they had right. no food for three days because they couldn't order Grubhub or whatever it is they do and how they survive. I mean, imagine, bro, being in a world where you don't have staples in your, in your pantry. Right. But they live in a different reality because as you said, their reality has been a cloud, a virtual fake simulation that they have no way to actually navigate other than what is being shown on the screen, which again, television, right? Mm. Which is the same thing from an internet, from a TV. So, I mean, it's like, that's them. And, and again, you know, I, I, I kind of have some sympathy for them because again, they grew up in this. You and I didn't at least grow up in this. And so we were able to develop our curiosity and our creativity and our critical thinking skills, but most of them have no way to do that. Yeah. Dude, why would you, if you and me, and I'll put me and you in the shoe. If we were in that generation, you and I were 22 year old kids right now. Why the fuck would we do work to figure it out when we could just ask this thing for the answer? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, like, do we really, yeah. do we really like sit here from a judgmental perspective? And I know you and I aren't, but do we, can we even judge them for what they're doing when the, the the laws and the rules of the game were completely changed inverted or not they were just completely changed and they didn't get help they didn't get help from their parents no, to, to, no. to make the good choices survival, bro look at yeah. them put in front of us everything yeah. is more expensive they're not paying people more money the job industry and the job world has gotten worse yeah. it's just one shiny object after another and so the parents are enslaved attempting to get that for their kids and their kids are not being with their parents because they're in the cloud. Yeah. So, I well, mean, like what, you know, what, what do you do about it? Well, in, in, in our generation and our parents' generation, like you were a bad parent if you were a latchkey kid, right? Like you weren't home, you were working. So you had to go home, go home to, uh, from school on your own and let yourself right. in and, and do your thing. Well, right. what's worse than that is having YouTube raise your children. It's like, you're at, restaurant, you're at a restaurant. You're at a restaurant with your with your tablet. You're you're in the grocery store with your tablet. You're on it all day long. That's that's worse because that that is you're not even giving your kid a chance to think for themselves. And and it's it's a it's a choice, and it's and it's not easy to be present with your kids. It's not easy to make the choice to to raise consciously aware critical thinking, you know, little kids, like you have kids and I have kids. It's not, it's a lot of fucking work, man. Like I'm tired today. Like yeah. yesterday was a long day. I got up, I got up early, you know, my yep. kid pissed the bed last night. Like yep. I got bad sleep last night yep. and, and they're, you know, they're right over there. Like they're probably right. outside chasing the chickens, but that it's, it's not, it's a lot, it's, it's a lot of hard work and it's also worth it because we're talking about our reality. We're talking about the, the future for our children. Yeah. 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 You got to make, you got to make choices. You got to make smart choices. Yeah, man. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's interesting. I mean, you know, to what you just said, you know, and I don't want to rabbit hole too much cause I want to get to this last point on psychedelic use, uh, but go to any restaurant, dude, take your kids, take your wife and, and, and look at, look around. I mean, there is so few parents and kids connecting. They're all on their phones. Like you said, tablets. Like, you know, my kids know there is no technology at restaurants. There is no. absolutely none. Now, again, 
I break that rule myself. If I'm waiting on something important and it's a time of the day where something's coming and I absolutely have to take it, you know, as the CEO of my company right now, like there are certain things I cannot get out of, but it is not on my table. It is in my pocket. Okay. And no one that I know of again, you know, and if you're a parent that does this good for you, right. But most people, bro, they're sitting at the table and they're literally zoned out in their phones. It is, I mean, again, I encourage anyone to take, to, you know, to take this Pepsi challenge and play this game. And you go to a restaurant and just look yeah. around and you see how many families are actually engaged talking to one another in conversation. And it is, I'd say it's one out of every hundred families, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would, I would say that that's, that's probably right. Yeah. It's so, it's so sad to go to a restaurant and see a family of four. Not one person looking at each and other. And nobody's talking. Nobody's, nobody's yeah. sharing. Nobody's no. laughing or smiling. It's insane. Um, yeah. It's insane. it's insane. Well, I mean, again, it's like I said, like we can choose to be negative and to look at it and say, Oh God, what is to come? Or we can, again, just still continue to create our heaven on our earth and focus on the now. I mean, look at the end of the day, dude, both of us know that something is coming that is going to shape the reality of what we live in now, because the planet cannot sustain this, that, you know, human beings, and we haven't even talked about this, but human beings can't even sustain the rate at which technology is evolving now. Right. right. Like it is, I mean, dude, I saw this yesterday or, or on Tuesday, I was in a mastermind for my company and this is mind blowing stuff. And it really made me pause, but they now have AI copywriters. Hmm. So you literally can hire an AI copywriter for your website to update in real time to like a dynamic level relevant to whatever ads you're serving on all your bullshit, you know, social media and paid acquisition. So it's like, you know, they're, you know, in the mastermind, you know, a lot of these guys are e-commerce dorks and stuff. And so they're all excited about it. And I'm sitting there thinking, you know, as me, as Jay, Con Jay Campbell, the conscious observer, I'm like, Jesus Christ, we're, we're, copywriting is one of the most amazing human skills. Like that is a highly paid, highly rewarding job for people who are extremely bright and craft persuasive copy. Right. And they're almost gone now. They're, I mean, th fuck, we're on the <laughs> phase well, we phased them out. So it just hit me again as a cre you know conscious crea creator. I was like, Jesus, God, dude, what does this mean for humanity, dude? Like, like, what does this really mean if we look at this from a deeper perspective? And again, I don't want to rabbit hole. I want to get to the last topic, but it really means, dude, that we're not far from, again, either the golden age or the man machine merge, the singularity, as they call it, the Ray Kurzweil's and the Peter Diamandis's. And it's your choice as a human being, as a father, as a husband, yeah, to you know pave the path or tread the road of what side you're going to be on that fence. And obviously I know what side you and I are on, but the people that watch us, you know, you're going to have to make the choice soon. And I don't know if it's it really, I mean, again, you know, Diamandis says 2030 to 2031. And the angels, you know, say the golden age starts between 2031 and 2034. So, I mean, we're not far away. Yeah. Right. But something is going to happen. There is absolutely no doubt about it. The brain of a human cannot keep up with this processor. Right. The computing power, you know, the quantum and all these different levels now that they have. So, again, that is in and of itself proof that great change is imminent in our construct of reality, our society, whatever you want to call it. And you will, as a human being watching this podcast, have to make that choice at the point, Sean. And it's not That's right. Off. It's true. Yeah. You may have to move. You may have to switch your job. You may have to sell a bunch of shit. You may have to b learn how to do small engine repair. You may right. need to learn how right. to sew or, right. and you may need to learn how to cook and guard. I mean, right. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's, let's be honest. I mean, you know, I, my wife and I were talking about this yesterday morning. We were just being in a grateful moment and I was like, shit is so bizarre with what's happening. We had just both watched the JP Sears video mm -hmm. and I was like, she's like, yeah, but do you really will get, to, do you think it'll really get to that? And you know, we'll have to, and I'm like, I think it'll get to that. It's not, it's not a matter of if it's when, dude. And she's like, well, you know, we'll just move. And I'm like, move. We will literally be getting a bag, a bug out bag. And we will be 
bouncing to wherever I feel is the safest place to go. I mean, again, yeah. I'm not, this is not prepping and I still live my life within 50 miles of Los Angeles. You're within 50 miles. I think, are you 50 miles with Seattle? Yeah, I'm within 50 of Seattle. So, so right. So we're still living in the matrix succeeding, doing what we have to do. But I mean, again, you have to live your life as if, you know, what was it? Uh, Robert, Robert De Niro in the movie, uh, I think it was heat, right? Don't live your life. If you can't, whatever you do, you can't walk out in 10 seconds flat, right? So if you don't have that path already mapped out in your mind and as a mental construct, then whatever comes is whatever comes. But I mean, obviously dude, look around. Yeah. Well, look it, what's it, happening in South Africa right now. Yeah. People I, are literally in the streets protecting their homes. Yeah. There's no cops. And this is in a very, very modernized part of South Africa. This is not like the rural outskirts of like chaos. Yeah. So again, dude, it, it, it is what it is. All we can do is live in the moment. But again, you know, well, are you really consciously ready? Tying it, tying it back full circle, you know, and, 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 you know, we just have a few more minutes, so maybe we can, maybe we can do a part three down no, the I, road. No, I, I, I yeah? have till, I have till 11. We're good. Keep going. Oh, okay. The, it, it, pulling it back full circle is if you are in a state of fear rather than preparedness, exactly. if you, if you don't have an ability to do high quality discernment and discernment is to differentiate between what's real and what's not, what's, what's fed to you with an agenda and what's not, do you have free will or not? Right. If you can't, if you can't make that distinction, then you're going to kind of just go along with the thing and you're going to do what people are kind of suggesting you do because they, they they say it's important. The science says it's important. I got to do the thing. Like, it's so if you're to do Sean, everybody else yeah, is doing it. Yeah. If you're stressed and fearful, it's really hard to make a good choice for your family. And that's when people got to get swept up right. and they make choices that they really don't feel that good about. You know, they, they, they commit to doing, you know, something that they don't, really feel really good about, but, but then they find themselves there. There's they're they're too far gone and they don't have a plan. They don't have a plan B like me and my family and my, my, my in-laws, like we have a bug out plan. We yeah. have a place where we're going to go. We've got gear, we've got set up, we're gonna yep. have gas and food and gardens. Like, you, and, and that's not paranoid. It's just, you got to think, you got to think this stuff through. You got to see the writing on the wall and it's, and, and, and this is not, I'm not saying that we're looking at apocalypse right now, but we're right. definitely looking at a, a shift in our reality. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. And that's exactly right. And that's the best point. And we'll get into psychedelic use for dads now, but mm -hmm. if you're coming from a place of love and you keep your frequency in resonance again, through everyday creativity, conscious co-creation acting in the highest you know, state of divinity serving in your highest and best capacity, you're never going to react out of fear. You're, you're, you're literally already prepared. And even in the event, things don't go right in the preparation because you're here and not here, you're going to, you're going to meander through. And it's like, you know, my buddy, the special forces guy, Jason, I'll throw out a shot, shout out to his name. The outdoor goon on social media always says, look, man, everything is happening exactly as it's supposed to, as it has always been intended, as it will always be. And that is the truth. I don't give a shit what story you and I have, what vibrational level we're at. The world and the human experience and obviously just the actual awareness of life will continue. No matter what, yeah. it's going yeah. to continue. Whether, again, it's we true. have an apocalypse, we have a flip, a shift, a pull, the poles flip, Nibiru shows up, whatever, humanity will continue and the planet will too. Gaia, yeah. in my yeah. opinion, is not going to be obliterated. It may obliterate yeah. its inhabitants, yeah. but it's going to keep going. Yeah. <laughs> All right, ahead. psychedelic use for dads. Yeah. Um, so again, full disclosure, I've already been very open about this in my life. Uh, I'm a big believer. Uh, I use even naltrexone at times uh, to upregulate receptor sensitivity. I've been using that since 2014. Um, I don't. Are you doing? Are you doing the? Are you doing the Lodo Lodo naltrexone? 
Yeah. I mean, I do at times. I do at times. Yeah. But I just I, learned about it recently. Fascinated. Oh, by awesome. It. Okay, cool. So, yeah. So we can talk about that too. But I mean, like, look, I've, I've been using uh, psychedelics, shrooms, uh, you know, psilocybin, um, you know, even acid. Um, I, I've, I've done it all. Okay. And I'm a huge, pure crystalline MDMA supporter. I mean, obviously now it's, you know, legal in PTSD and, uh, TBI people, big deal now in the, uh, military veteran community, you know, for that, Mm -hmm. uh, I've been using MDMA for over 20 years. Uh, I've used the garbage shit, you know, when it was, uh, cut, you know, and I've also used pure, I would never touch anything that wasn't pure now knowing where it comes from and stuff like that. So anyway, I say all that stuff to give myself credibility When I speak about this, I always say, whatever you use, you know, obviously the difference between a pill and a poison is the dosage and moderation is always the most paramount thing. You said it last week, you know, Tim, Tim Ferriss, I think coined it, whatever the MED principle, right? The minimum effective dosage, always start low, go slow. Um, But I, I think, and I don't think this is a knowing, this is absolutely an awareness I do not believe, and I hate using the word believe, but I'll just say, I do not believe that anyone can awaken, truly awaken until there are certain, you know, uh, I would call it doppelganger DNA. I would call it, you know, um, you know, there's entrons, you know, Dr. Jerry DeHenna's Rivera calls it entrons. And these are latent DNA circuits. And they cannot be activated unless certain levels of chemicals through these agents can go through the system. Again, the mind, whatever you want to call it, the dendritic, dopaminergic, the synaptic pathways to turn these things on. And it was really when I first started using pure crystalline you know, lab based MDMA that everything changed for me from an awareness perspective. I mean, I was again a seeker. But it was like, boom. And then, you know, after that, and I started using MEO, it was like, holy shit, you know, mothership level. But, mm-hmm. you know, I'm giving you my experience with it. Um, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sure you have a lot to say, but I, I, I'm a huge supporter of using conscious drugs. That's what I call them, conscious yeah. drugs. Yeah. To turn on latent DNA that in a lot of ways, bro, for a lot of people, I don't think would ever get turned on without these. Yeah, well, because nobody's going to fast for 40 days and nobody's going to, you know, uh, isolate themselves in a cave for 40 days or go without, you know, nobody's going to dance um, and spin a candle for seven days. Right. right. You're not going to put on a, on a robe and spin like a Sufi, like most likely, you know, you're right. not going to, you're not going to do these sort of more ancient practices to, to get to these profound neurochemical states of altered consciousness it just, it's, it's rather inconvenient. And there is, there is a pathway for you to really change your consciousness, to perturb it. And we know the neurochemical explanations between, you know, what happens before, what does your brain look like uh, before you take uh, a dose of psilocybin, you know, new neural connections, other places lighting up, Yep. Um, you know, sp- spontaneous processing of trauma, uh, yep. preparation for end of life, you know, right. and, and the, the research is supporting it and the research is great. And I think essential for what's coming next, which is, you know, actual centers that are outside, you know, with the right people and the right mix where you can go do some, um, assisted psychotherapy with a psychedelic and actually do some really deep work in, in a, in a conscious and responsible way. That's what's coming. Um, the, the, there is a sort of reductionist scientific explanation that will satisfy the shareholders and that will satisfy the medical community and the skeptics that are like, well, is my, I've seen this is your brain and this is your brain on drugs and seen the egg fry in the frying pan. So I'm out, you know, I'm not, I'm, I don't want to participate because it's scary. And, um, you know, if I do, you know, if I do two hits of acid, I'm going to, I'm never going to be the same, you know, it's going to pickle my brain. And now we've seen 30, 40, 
50 years of people who have been experimenting with these compounds, expanding their consciousness, innovating, creating visionary art, doing incredible research, you know, you know, creating Apple, um, um, you know, transcendent, um, um, people who have been doing these compounds for a very long time. And there's in my mind, sort of a distinction between maybe people don't know what the term entheogen is and right. what an, what an entheogen is, is a compound that you're, you're using to expand your spiritual self. So rather than a, a psychoactive compound, which it, it will be, but you know, ayahuasca is an entheogen, psilocybin is an entheogen. If you're using acid to, to explore your consciousness, you know, it's considered an entheogen and the, the power of doing this in a responsible way, in a thoughtful way that that's using the right protocols, the right set, the right mindset and the right setting, the right environment, you're able to unlock things. Just like you said, these latent DNA, you're able to unlock things that are just like dormant in you. And what comes from a responsible use. And, and I think that I, I, I personally think that, um, that that expect men, dads, fathers, leaders have to be experimenting. They they it's really important that we explore our own consciousness because that's where innovation comes from. That's where the 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 next vision of uh of civilization will come from is through this exploration of our consciousness. And rather than going into it to like trip out and enjoy the light show and wow out at the shiny colors and the swirlies, you know, in the tree that's talking to you as, as you take, you know, four grams of, you know, psilocybin cubensis and go for a walk, uh, in the woods. That's cool. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with that, but this is on a pathway, hopefully for you to learn something about yourself, for you to learn about the nature of consciousness to tap into the the fundamental consciousness of this fungi that's been around way longer than we have <laughs> just a little bit bro <laughs> it has information for us you know and and when you go into a a psilocybin um ceremony or you're experimenting it with yourself and you're thinking about well, what's my intention what do i want to learn from this and you have a little bit of fun with it. You know, you can sort of treat the mushroom as, as, uh, as an entity because it is, it is a, it is a sentient entity. It is the most ubiquitous. It is everything comes from fungi. Pl plants are cool. Animals are cool, but fungi first, you know, minerals, fungus. That's, that's really the, the baseline of, of, uh, of, of how this physical reality has come together. When you go into it with an intention to, you know, learn something about yourself or ideate on, on a future vision for yourself or to just explore what that looks like. What will happen if I just close my eyes and breathe through this there? It, it is, it is the, it is the most profound tool for personal development period. Do you yeah. agree with that? Do you think? Oh yeah. Mean, yeah. Well, I mean, I wouldn't be who I was without these experiences. I mean, right. I, I, and again, I was very blessed that I was able to start down this path without children. I would say that it would be much more complex. And maybe we can talk about that for a minute before we get yeah. to the last point. Um, you know, if you're in survival, you know, the perfect example is like, oh, my kid shit pissed the bed last night. I had to wake <laughs> up. My sleep is disturbed. I mean, it's obviously, it, it's, don't, don't anyone listening to this profound podcast, don't misunderstand what I'm about to say. You know, you can do anything right with will and intention, as you already said, but like the reality is, is it's definitely going to be easier to start down this path um, of using psychedelics in whatever form or fashion without the responsibility of also raising ch children in parallel, but you could definitely do it. Um, I think you and I both, you know, were blessed and, you know, humbled and privileged to have the opportunity to start before we had the experience of kids. Cause as you know, kids are a whole different thing altogether and they require massive amounts of time. And it's crazy to think about just children and energetically where they are. Right. Because as you said, like, you know, before five, I think they're still in the, 
the God realm of consciousness. They don't even know they haven't been brainwashed and converted into the matrix yet. They're not mm -hmm. part of the energy and frequency of duality and dissonance. You know, they're still literally in that loving only energy. And obviously they stay in it as long as you and I, or, or the, or, or, or the parents, uh, you know, govern them mm -hmm. with a will and intention of love and not, you know, a reaction of fear. So it's, it's interesting even in and of itself, but like, you know, what, what would you tell a parent who watches this podcast or watches both podcasts and is like, you guys are blowing my head off, but how do I do this? You know, I got yeah. a four year old, a two year old and a six month old. And, you know, I have sex like once a month, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so like, I've got like all these other responsibilities to handle and take care of. And it's like, yeah, you're talking about using psychedelics. So what right. would you say to that person? I would say read men are from Mars. Women are from Venus. From <laughs> right. Start there to really understand hor how hormones work to really understand how fucking important it is for you to be alone as a man. It yeah, is totally essential, totally. essential. Totally. You, you literally, you have, you have to have time by yourself yes, dude. just to keep your shit together. Just to it's keep insane, sane. Dude. It's insane. Like, yeah, no, that's, that, that's, I mean, that's a whole right? other podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, I mean, it really is because you know, men don't do that. We no. are men in the matrix, especially in the West are trained to internalize everything. Suffer. Right. Right. Just deal, just deal with it. You'll, you'll, yeah. Just, just deal with it. It's and all going to work out. <laughs> it, it, you, you cannot, you will implode or it will manifest in other ways through alcoholism or. That's what I was just going to say, bro. Do right. you know how it manifests? That's what happens. So the man buckles sugar, alcoholism, low testosterone, yeah. obesity, insulin resistance, lack of erection, wife cheats on him. Right. Then man's destroyed, you know, cause the system, if he's the, if he's also the sole breadwinner, he's done. Right. Right. So now he's paying her, he's, you know, paying her boyfriend too. No. And then, and then, and then he hasn't had sex. And so, you know, the, the game is like, get myself in the best shape I can so that I can actually have sex with another woman. And then they yeah. never, so they go from one vicious cycle that unravel yeah. to the next. They never do any kind of personal one-on-one -on -one, alone isolation self-work. And honestly, bro, like thank God for me, that was forced upon me before I met Monica because I went through again, you know, two separate dark nights of the soul attempting to kill myself, having my two daughters kidnapped from me, losing them for 18 months. I was forced to sequester myself and go into isolation mm. because I wanted when I first got out being so devastated and I was a fucking mess to just, and, and you know, thankfully for women in life, there was no Tinder at that point, but you know, I was on match.com <laughs> and I was on whatever. And I, my goal was literally to have sex with three women in 24 hours. I was a disaster. You know what I'm saying? Like actually yeah. climax three times with three separate women in 24 hours. Right. It was like, it was just, I was gone. It was in the, you know, in the, root chakra. But anyway, the point is, is what you're saying is absolutely so critical. And so many men never take any personal time yeah. because they're not, they don't think it's their responsibility. It, it is, it is essential when, you know, when you ask the question, well, you know, for, for dads, for, for guys, how do you, how do you know, people are busy, it's, you know, summertime. So kids aren't even in school again, they'll go back in the fall. Um, how do I even prioritize this? How do I even entertain this notion right. to, to do um, some sort of psychedelic responsibly? And the fact of the matter is, well, you have to start by having, making time to yourself for priority. And I'm right. not talking about 18 holes of golf every Saturday where you crush 30 beers four cigars with four other guys. That's <laughs> absolutely not the path. Not the yeah. same thing. Right. Um, uh, that's not what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> I, I'm not talking about going to the ball game and crushing 30 beers and seven right. hot dogs and, and not saying, you know, <laughs> and anyway, so what I'm talking about is actual time to go be by yourself, to be alone so that you can get your testosterone back so that you can have some time to clear your mind totally, dude. so that you can actually think about what the fuck is important to me. 
What do I right. need to be focused on right now? Right. What do I need? What do I actually, well, man, what do I actually need right now? Do I need to move? Do I need to eat? Do I need to, do I need to cry? Do I need to just, you know, space out and stare at the ocean with a fishing pole in my hand? Like maybe, maybe yes. And so it starts there by like prioritizing your self-care and including um, isolation in it, including alone time. That's step one. Step two is to educate yourself and to understand what are these different compounds? How do they work? You know, you, a lot of a lot of guys listening are like, "Well, where the fuck am I going to get that? I don't even know how to procure. Right. I don't. I can't ask my coworker. I'll freak him out. He seems cool. He you honestly, my doctor can't give me a script for it. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> right. So, th- what you should start by doing and. And what I've found more and more frequently recently is that MDMA really is the, for a lot of people, sort of the best practices first step. It's the bridge. Yeah. It is. It's it's heart opening. It feels good. You're optimistic. Um, it, it's it, as it's, long as it's real, it really can't do much side effects. As long as you only use like you know eighty to one hundred twenty milligrams like once every seven to ten days, you're fine. But you yeah, know, again, everyone, again, the difference is the pill to the poison. Is that more must be better, Sean? Yeah. Right. Yeah. You don't need to be grinding your teeth and, you know, like, you know, dancing, you know, alone by yourself for 15 hours. That's not a good idea. But, but, you know, conventionally speaking, that's, that's a nice first step into it, but educate yourself, you know, go, go, um, look at Erewhon, look at third wave. You know, my, my friend, Paul Austin is the CEO, um, of third wave, um, Go read up on these different compounds, what they do, how they've been used, what's the chemical composition, so that you kind of have an idea of what's going on. And then begin to have an open and honest conversation about this with your spouse. You know, if you're if you're married and you're like, man, I don't, I don't think wifey's gonna be into me going and eating mushrooms and hanging out by myself in the woods for a half a day, um, begin to engage in the conversation. Obviously, don't do it at 9 30 at night after two glasses of wine, three glasses of wine, right? right? Don't start that conversation from that place. Use your fucking brain and wait until like a Saturday afternoon as you know, maybe the kids are outside playing and you're hanging out on the couch and the TV's not on to say, Hey, I want to, I want to, there's been something that I've been thinking about a lot. I want to talk to you about it. I, I hope that you'll keep an open mind. Just start there. Just start having that conversation to have open communication and say, you know, here you, you can pull in some t- statistics. There's lots of resources out there. The, you know, look at the Johns Hopkins uh, research. Um, look at the Roland Griffiths study. Look at the TED talk that Roland Griffiths did. You know, listen to the Michael Pollan episode. Um, uh, anyway, there's lots of resources that you can like sort of present to your to your significant other about it. Um but you do have to take a step toward it. You can, it's mm-hmm. not going to, you're not, you're not 19 again. It's not just right. going to land in your lap and be like, cool, right. here's this cool opportunity. You have to also find a tribe. You have to find a community. Right. You right. know, you, you got to find physical people in the real world that you can actually connect with. And maybe those and no, people. No, don't send Sean and I an email after this podcast <laughs> yeah. runs asking us where we get ours. Cause that no. will not be deleted. That will be deleted. That's not work. That doesn't work. Find the tribe around you. Go to a tea shop. You know, go right. to go surfing. Go, um, go join a hikers club. Go find <coughs> a, a mycelial society that does mushroom foraging. Like you can find, you know, yoga, float tanks. Find your tribe. Go to a, go to a, uh, an outdoor concert. You know, and and bring your coolest, like your coolest friend. Like, are you cool, man? Bring that guy with you, so that you've got a a co-pilot and go actually <laughs> explore this in the, in, um, in person. And, and it's not for everybody, you know, flat out, you know, a lot of people are listening to this are like, that's just not on my radar and that's totally okay. There's no judgment for me or Jay. If you're like, I don't want to do this. It's too scary. I don't want to lose control. That's fine. Totally cool. I hope that you explore other ways to do the self love, to do the self care, to to explore your consciousness. It, it was the it was the main reason why I opened float centers was because <laughs> I wanted a legal 
uh, it's the next best thing, right? It's the next best thing to a trippy out of your right. mind for going, whoa, experience. Go float in a float tank. Go to flotationlocations.com and find a float center near you and go try that. Like that's a nice way to kind of edge toward how do you do by yourself for fucking 60 minutes or 90 minutes? Can you keep your shit together? Do you get bored? You know, what do you, what, what sort of, you know, laugh tracks are going on in your head? So for, for me, it's if for people who are serious about their personal evolution, psychedelics are a massively power the the most powerful yeah. tool for doing that and it's definitely the quickest hack uh so yeah. i would say you're being nice bro this is the Jay Campbell <laughs> podcast. no but i mean look this is the jay campbell podcast right like they would not be <laughs> listening to me if they didn't get the truth and the authenticity yeah. and the transparency and uh you know anyone who's this deep with you and me now knows who you are too so it's like i'm just gonna cut out and say it like if you're in a relationship and you know, you want to do this and your wife does it, you need to evaluate your relationship. You know, I'm not telling you to go get a divorce, but you're not in the right relationship. And again, you know, I keep talking about this in my private group on the optimized tribe. You know, I do once a week call with everybody, you know, we got like 800 people here and, you know, I'm always Mm -hmm. telling them, I'm like, look, man, you can be attached to the 3d world, which is unraveling, or you can start to create authentic spiritual partnerships. Yeah. Because, As you know, making my spiritual growth is the only priority left. If you do not evolve your spiritual growth, you are going to unravel just as the rest of society is unraveling right now. Look around. Sean and I don't because we're not in that stream of consciousness. We're in our stream of consciousness, which is creating in consciously co-creating, but the reality is that's, it's that simple. Like, you know, you, again, you're being nice and, you know, being open and stuff like that, but like there isn't anything else right now other than developing authentic power and authentic power comes from creating spiritual partnerships. And the only way you're going to evolve your consciousness, obviously your spirituality is through these type of things. And yeah. if it's too much for you, then tough shit. I mean, I just did a big call last night with metal, which is like, I don't know, the biggest men's group in West Los Angeles. It's full of celebrity entertainers and all these high level dudes. And, you know, they wanted me to talk about uh, testosterone and they wanted me to talk about at the end consciousness and stuff like that too. And a lot of the guys, there was like 80 guys on the call, you know, it was a zoom call or whatever. And, you know, a lot of the guys, just older guys are just turned off. Not testosterone is not for me. Meanwhile, they're dead. They're decrepit. They're bent over. And it's like, uh, you know, I don't have judgment of you, but like, you are living in a paranoid survival controlled reality where you're not open to expanding your mind. You're clearly not evolving into spiritual partnerships and creating authentic power in your life. You're beholden and attached to the old way of doing things, which, Hey man, that's fine. If that's where you are and that's where you've gotten to. And you know, you would say, well, it got me here. I've got 6 million in the bank. Good man. Good on you. Stay there. Be who you are. Just know that the 3D world is dead already for those that can see through, you know, the third dimensional perception of things and have a multi-sense, multi-perceptional awareness. It's already dead. You and I already know it's dead. We're already prepared for it dying. But there are literally, what, 4 billion people, probably maybe 5 billion people on planet Earth that aren't in that awareness and aren't ready. And so when it comes, they'll have to deal with it. You know, you and I will already be five, 10, 20 steps ahead. Who cares? And there are many like us, you know, I'm not saying that we're better than yeah. anybody else, but it's just mind blowing, dude, that people stay stuck again, stay attached to things that do not serve them, which again, are always coming from ego, which is yeah. fear-based. It's all fear-based. Anything that the ego has overriding power and control over is based on fear. It's not based on spiritual evolution or again, authentic power which is only love. There is only authentic power is love, right? You got power, which is strong, or you have force, which is weak. There, yeah. there, there is nothing but power. If you want to evolve consciously to wherever this planet is going. And again, dude, let's be honest. I mean, if you evolve with force down here, you will become a transhumanist. You will become a biobot. You will become stuck into some sort of like a interdimensional matrix with just like a, a transistor coming out of you that like keeps your airways, you know, Ugh. up and down while you're living in this cloud reality, you know, cloud out- atlas. 
I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's just, it, it, it's, you know, call it what you will, but that's not resonance. That's dissonance. That is absolutely dissonance. You can be lied to and believe that living, you know, not as God intended you is resonance, but it, that's a lie. Resonance is living as God created us and intended us to have curiosity, to have free will, to have ability to consciously co-create and in nature and to observe all things. And it's just, you know, anything that's technology based, dude, that that's where you now are stuck, then you get what is coming. And, and, and to that love point, when maybe I, I think about it in a, in a, in, in a specific way. And, and I want to see if you vibe with this. It's like when you're making from a, uh, uh, decisions from a place of love, what can that mean? It can mean, what do you love to do? Right. How do you like to give love? How right. do you like to receive love? Right. Like maybe it's hand jobs twice a week, right? right. From your, from your wife. Yep. Maybe it's a back rub. Maybe it's a gift, right? That's me, me, I'm, I'm, I'm acts of touch and my wife is acts of service. Right. I'm, I'm words of affirmation and my wife is acts of service. And so how, how do you, what sort of life would you love to live? How do you love to spend your free time? So right. when you're making choices that orient around the things that you love and the way that you want love to show up in your world, your life gets better. Your yeah. and and if you are orienting and optimizing for for that, for a positive outlook, for for love and affection and excitement and curiosity and preparedness and and, and interesting experiences and consciousness and all of the things that we've been now talking about in, in these two parts is you got to make choices and yeah. no one's going to come figure this out for you. You've got to take an active role. And the if you're in fence sitting is gone, bro, it can't, you can't do it anymore. You, your, your, the powers of influence in culture, in finance, in, real estate, like the, you have to make smart choices for you and your family to create the life that you want. So get out of the fear. Um, ask yourself, does this serve my highest purpose? Identify what that is, explore your consciousness and get your body right. Grow your hair out, you know, move out of town, set some stuff up. It, it's it, it like, get excited for your life and right. generate it because you, you and I know Jay, that, that when you have enthusiasm throughout the day, every day is fun and interesting. And exactly. even if you have a nine to five that you don't like, find a way out, either find a way out or find a way for them to pay you double what you're making now. And there's ways to do that. You know, we talk about this in coaching clients. There's ways to do that, but you can, there's, all these different areas of, of your life that you can optimize. You just got to, you just got to generate some, some fucking mojo on it, man. Have some fun. It, it, well, well said, bro. I mean, you know, a, a profound part two of this podcast and we probably will do another one. Um, I mean, it's just, people just have to be brave, man. Like bravery and courage is not really a common skill of humankind anymore now, because again, mm -hmm. they have taken curiosity and creativity away and they have created group think and group construct mentalities that is all based on the cloud and the cloud dictates and governs the thoughts. And as you know, I don't want to like pick on younger generations because the older generations, you know, our parents and their parents, you know, and most of their parents are gone, but they had the droning of the television. So there's always a persuasion game mm -hmm. going on. It's up to you as the individual to be sovereign, empowered, and free, and to choose actively, as you said, and wisely relative to whatever you, what is in the best and highest interest of your family and your children. You know, again, yeah. those that are responsible to you, it's funny, you and I could talk forever on this, but like, you know, you hear so many people in the religious world, whether they're Catholic, Protestant, Presbyterian, Islamic, Jewish, it doesn't matter, where they brainwash you that, you know, all you have is your family. And, and I always say, that's right, my wife and my kids. Okay, that's my family. Like, I love my parents, but they're walking their path. You know, I'm only in control of myself, obviously, at the end of the day. But 
the small circle of influence that I truly have are my children who are not adults yet and my wife who lives with me and my dogs. <laughs> I mean, outside of that, what do I really have from a control standpoint? You and I both know nothing. We can yeah. brainwash ourselves and lie to ourselves and live in the matrix and think that we have control over that. But all we have is control over ourselves and the people that are in our circle who li you know, literally are alive due to the decisions that we make, right? The people living in our house or our domicile or our fucking farm or wherever we live, that's all you really are um, you know, alleged to, if that's the best word to say, because yes, you can love your mom and dad and brothers and sisters and all that, but they're on their own path. Now, if you're yeah. an adult, they don't have any say. And if you're, right. you know, as you said, at the very beginning of the show, if you're attached and depressed because of something that happened in the past or, you know, worries of what may happen in the future, you're cheating yourself out of the present moment. Mm -hmm. And the present moment is all we have. And so embrace it and live, you know, seize the day, you know, carpe diem, live at your highest and best every single moment. Yeah. And if stuff happens that you want to label negative right away or your ego is reacting, like you said, you know, somebody cuts you off in traffic and you want to be like, fuck you, forgive yourself if you do. I mean, hopefully you get to a place where you can say, hey, man, you're having a bad day. I, I yeah. said you love, but if you don't, <laughs> forgive yourself and get right yeah. back into the present moment. Right. Yeah. You, you you take chances, fuck up, make mistakes. It's going to happen. It's inevitable. You're going to fail and you can count on that happening. You just make more adjustments. You try new right. things. You, somebody looks at you funny. Oh, you, you know, you, who cares? you stay fucking, who cares? <laughs> Go literally. Right. I mean, I mean, yeah, that's that dude. That's, that's it. You're, you know, I mean, for me, I don't even look at my mistakes and my failures and my collapses and my fiascos and my debacles. I don't even look at them negatively in any sense anymore because they were just great learning experiences. They sure. were perceptional, perceptional value. Yeah. But only when you get to that level where you see them as such. And again, until I was 43, I labeled them as mistakes and negative self-awareness. And now like everything I know was an opportunity for growth and evolution. And, it, and now I look at those things as the greatest, you know, gifts. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Here, here. Awesome, man. Well, listen, brother, I love you and appreciate you. And this podcast was again, phenomenal. If somebody, you know, wants to work with you, connect with you, coach with you, what is the best way for them to do that? Yeah. I mean, the, the fastest way is to go to my website. It's Sean McCormick.com S E A N McCormick. Um, or you can go to Instagram. It's real. There it is. It's real Sean McCormick. That's the fastest way. I'm super accessible. I'm really open. I post, I post frequently. Some of it's, uh, focused on nutrition and biohacking and some of it's uh, jumping off of very large. Yeah. Stories. yeah. I actually watch. I, 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 Nice. I watch you on Instagram now. Yeah. You're like one of three people actually <laughs> pay attention to on Instagram. Nice. Oh, I, that means a lot to me. I, I, it really does. I, let me thank you for letting me. Yeah. Sean Evolver on, on Twitter. I don't use that very much, but um, thank you for the vitals. I just want to say, Jay, I'm, I'm so inspired by the work that you do. I'm inspired by your ability to reinvent yourself and to innovate. I'm inspired by your delivery and the way that you're showing up in the world. And, um, honestly, I'm, I'm really, re I feel really fortunate to have connected with you in such a deep way and to be able to go this deep and dive into this content with you. Uh, it's really a pleasure. I'm, I, I can't wait. This is the beginning. This is the beginning of a, of a beautiful friendship, man. It's really great. Thank you. It's beautiful, man. I, I agree. I feel the same way. You are one of the children of the light. Uh, all of us are uniting at this current time on planet earth. I can't wait to honestly break both of these podcasts and, you know, right back at you, man. Like, uh, hopefully, uh, you and I can get together at some point, you know, in the near future, you know, it's like I told my wife the other day, like, you know, how much time do we really have to be able to freely travel, bro? Yeah. I mean, right. That's the question that you really have to ask yourself. Yeah, sure. You know, we can get on a private jet and spend 40 grand and I can fly up to Seattle or you could fly to San Diego, but it's like, you know, in realistic perspectives, like how many people in average society, are going to have that ability. Cause I mean, again, you know, it's looking weirder and weirder every day. So, I mean, you know, embrace these moments, embrace this opportunity. You know, again, I I'm grateful and privileged and humbled to be able to connect with you virtually now. Mm -hmm. And obviously we're very, very close again, two children of the light reconnecting in this time and place. So yeah. Namaste brother. 
again, I love and appreciate this opportunity. And I will just say to everybody watching this show, remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see you guys very soon.